So, if Elizabeth Warren, senator from Massachusetts, is actually truly concerned about getting a progressive candidate elected to the White House, she would drop out right now and endorse Bernie Sanders. All she is doing at this point is splitting the vote. There's literally 538 shows she has a 2% chance of winning the nomination. Bernie has a 40%, the most out of any of the candidates. She finished third in Iowa. She finished fourth in New Hampshire. She's going to finish at least third in Nevada and probably fourth or fifth in South Carolina. And she's not going to do well in any of the Super Tuesday states. Literally, she is staying in for her ego right now and still throwing shade at the Bernie Sanders campaign and Bernie himself. She did it during her speech post-New Hampshire as well as this tweet on Twitter, obviously, about this Las Vegas union trying to defend like the union bosses that are trying to ma manipulate the union workers and not supporting Medicare for all, even though it would be a great advantage for union workers. They wouldn't have to spend, you know, a lot of their bargaining time negotiating for good health care. It would already be guaranteed as well as, you know, when the unions go on strike, the companies wouldn't be able to hold that over their heads. They would still be covered in health care. So it's a huge benefit and... Elizabeth Warren's just staying in for her ego right now, and it's hugely disappointing to somebody that was, you know, in theory, the most closely ideolo ideologically aligned with Bernie Sanders, but it's clear that she's gone further and further to the right. Kyle Kalinske made a point in one of his videos today that he thinks Warren made some type of a pact with Amy Klobuchar and vice versa, and it's just just really disappointing because I, when she, Elizabeth Warren got into the race and she was touting all of these progressive values and policies, I, I had decent hopes for her. I thought maybe she could have been, you know, a pretty good vice president for Bernie Sanders. And now I'm not sure, like, why would you honestly want Elizabeth Warren in the Sanders administration when it doesn't seem like she's, she stands for anything anymore. She's totally backtracked for Medicare for all. She's throwing shade at Bernie Sanders. She accused him of being a, a sexist, and it, it's just, it's very disappointing. So, this is an article from Jacobin. Here's why I think she should drop out by Luke Elliott Negri. Um, let's see. But, yeah. Recent polling shows Warren voters ranking Bernie as their second choice and vice versa. Bernie won the popular vote in Iowa, um, and if the delegate count had been accurate, he would have won that as well. Um, he won New Hampshire. He's surging ahead in um, Nevada. And then, so, that was some of their reasons, but I wanted to um, check this out. So, this is from 538. And they're not exactly, you know, Sandernistas, if you will, not in the um, in the tank for the Sanders campaign. So I kind of trust what these polls say from them because they're not biased towards positively towards Bernie. So I tend to put more weight in these. Um, so who will win the 2020 Democratic primary? This came out today, I believe. Today is the 13th. Yes, <laughs> I had to check. No one, two and five. Sanders, two and five, thirty-seven percent. The next closest is Biden, one and eight, twelve percent. Bloomberg, one and fifteen, seven, and obviously, you know, Bloomberg spent three hundred plus million dollars on TV ad buys. That's why he's been able to buy himself some support. Booty Judge, one and twenty-five, four percent. Look, Warren, one and fifty. A 2% chance of winning the Democratic primary. There's literally no path for her to get the Democratic nomination. She's just taking boat, votes from Bernie at this point, splitting the progressive vote, making it more likely that, you know, one of these centrist neoliberal candidates could win. And it's just very disappointing because, like I said, I had decently high hopes for her when she first got into the race and she was, you know, speaking up for 
Medicare for all. She was kind of on the side of, of Bernie, going against these more neoliberal candidates, but her her tone is totally changed and you know, as soon as she backtracked off of her support for Medicare all and really waffled on that, she tanked excuse me, she tanked in the polls as well as when she attacked Bernie Sanders as that tried to character assassinate him. Um, she went down in the polls as well. But look, Bernie is the most likely candidate to win the nomination, a whole 25% more likely than the next person, Joe Biden. And Bernie's at 2 and 5, Warren's at 1 and 50. There's no way she's going to win the nomination. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. All she is doing is making it more likely a neoliberal centrist gets the nomination, and that's just disgusting. I almost feel like, you know, she needs to be primaried in Massachusetts next time she's up for re-election there for her Senate seat, which I think would be 2024, because I think she got re-elected in 2018, I want to think. I want to say, I should say, in the range of uh, pledged delegates, Sanders 1550, Biden 783, Bloomberg 771, Booty Judge 495, Warren 266, a whole 1300 less than Bernie Sanders. But if those went to Bernie, I mean, it would just, you know, make it more easy that he carried a majority of the votes, majority of the support into um, into the convention in Klobuchar 97. And then let's go into these um, next two states. So the Nevada caucus, I think that's on February 22nd, so a week and after from this one. Forecast to win an average of 39% of the vote. and 80% of simulation, he wins between 28 and 50% of the vote. He has a 2 and 3, 67% chance of winning, much better than Biden, who's at 1 and 7. So look, Bernie's going to win the first three states. So there's a good chance he's going to win the first four states. Um, because the South Carolina, um, is it a primary or a caucus? Yeah, primary. So that's, I prefer the primaries just because it seems like there's less shady crap that can go, that can happen compared to the caucuses, i.e. Iowa. Sander, and so this is South Carolina, forecast to win an average of 31% of the vote in South Carolina and 80% of the simulations he wins between 15 and 48 he has a 50% chance of winning, a bit better than the second most likely winner, Biden, who has a 1 in 3 chance, which is really impressive because Biden had a massive lead in South Carolina not too many months ago, but Biden's support has been crumbling because of his horrible showings in Iowa. I think he came in fourth, and then New Hampshire, I think he came in fifth. Um, but just look, so Warren... This was in um, Nevada. So let's just look at Warren's numbers in Nevada. Let's see. Sanders. Um, did it show? I guess it didn't show it. But she was basically polling at like 10, 11, 12 in Nevada. And she's like polling at six. Oh, here we go. For exact numbers, so I'm not just speaking off the top of my head. So averages as of February 13th for the Nevada caucus. Sanders 24.8, Biden 16. So Bernie with a solid almost nine point lead there. Warren at 10.8 and third. Booty Judge 10.1. So look, if Warren dropped out encourage all of her supporters to endorse Bernie Sanders, which would make sense because they're supposedly the most ideologically aligned. He would potentially have like 35, 36% of the vote, potentially doubling up Biden. And again, the only reason she's staying in at this point is because there's some type of collusion between her and either one or a number of the neoliberal centrist candidates or just for her ego there's literally it's not going to happen elizabeth warren if you're really concerned about getting a progressive in the white house which you should be then you would be doing everything you could dropping out and getting behind bernie sanders in a, in a big way and so this is south carolina and she does even worse there so she's going to come in 
third or worst in four of the first primary and caucus states. She's just doing horribly. So Sanders is projected to win South Carolina, but you can see it's still going to be pretty tight. It looks like between Biden and Sanders. And look, Warren's polling at 7%. She's polling at 6th. She is in 6th place in South Carolina. She barely, I mean, as these states get more um, diverse as far as, you know, their racial and ethnic makeup go, she's going to fare even worse because her support among people and communities of color is basically non-existent, and Bernie Sanders has the most support from non-white voters. <laughs> so he's going to, as the states get more and more diverse, like California, like Nevada, like South Carolina, Texas, etc., Bernie's just going to keep killing it because he does so well with uh, with communities of, of color, and, and she doesn't. But look, if she dropped out, that 7 or so percent went to Bernie, I think he would win uh, South Carolina, no question, going 4 for 4, setting him up really well for these Super Tuesday states. And so let's, let's see, because um, it mentions some of these Super Tuesday... So California, obviously pretty big prize um, because of the amount of delegates it has, just because of its huge population. Sanders is forecast to win an average of 31% of the vote in California. In 80% of the simulations, he wins between 16 and 46. He has a 64% chance of winning the vote. So Bernie's going to win California, much better than most second, second likely winner, Biden, who has a 1 in 8 chance. So look, Bernie has a... 50% higher chance of winning California's primary than the next closest uh, candidate, Biden. And look, so he's going to get about 185 delegates, 71. Look, Warren's like, I mean, so ridiculous that she's staying in the race now. If she's truly concerned with getting progressive elected, if she's not, then okay. And it kind of appears that way, un unfortunately, that... She's kind of lost a lot of her progressive bona fides or background, however you want to say it, but just really disappointing because, again, I had decently high hopes for when she entered. And this is Texas, another another big one. So Sanders is forecast to win an average of 27% of the vote. 80, um, he has a one in two chance of winning the most votes, a bit better than the most second likely winner, Biden. Um, which is, I mean, it's quite a bit better, honestly, 48 to 21% for Biden. So he's, he's going to mop up. He's potentially going to go six for six in these first state. How, if any of these candidates, like, how are you staying in the race at this point? I mean, <sighs> the more Bernie just keeps killing it, the worse these odds are for everybody, all these other candidates. Let's see. North Carolina. Um, Bernie has a 2 and 5 percent chance of winning the most votes, a bit better than the most second likely winner, Biden, who has a 1 and 4. And Warren, look, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> 1, 2, 3. Warren coming in fifth again. She's just not, it's not going to happen, Elizabeth. You really should be concerned about getting a progressive elected. You're always talking about wanting to make, to make the United States better. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we elect Bernie Sanders. All of the other neoliberal centrist candidates, in my opinion, have so many, so much flaws and baggage that they would um, lose against Donald Trump. Bernie's the only one who I have a um, decent confidence could beat Trump, honestly. So what is that? The seventh state. So Bernie's looks like seven for seven, potentially. Um, Virginia. Look. He has a 1 in 2 chance of winning the most votes. Biden has 1 in 4, so almost 20% better there. And Warren, again, coming in fifth. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. So that's the eighth state. I'm just going to stop there, but the trends just keep continuing for these Super Tuesday states. And unfortunately, I don't think Elizabeth Warren is planning on dropping out.
anytime soon, but her support keeps weakening less and less. And anybody who has been a Warren supporter in the past who is now, I strongly, strongly encourage you, if you're really concerned about you know, getting a progressive elected to the White House and championing progressive policies and, you know, an agenda, you really need to consider strongly supporting Bernie Sanders at this point. After, you know, all of these, all of these states and all of these polls, it's clear she has a 2% chance of winning. It's not going to happen. Bernie Sanders has the movement, the support behind him. He's killing it in all these early caucus states and polls. He's going to clean up most of the states on Super Tuesday. And so I highly encourage you, if you're a Warren supporter and you're really concerned about, you know, advocating for progressive and, you know, the progressive values and helping out the working people in the United States, you really should be supporting Bernie Sanders at this point because it's just clear Warren has no shot at the nomination. All she's doing is splitting the progressive void at this point. So drop out Warren, support Bernie. Um, otherwise, you're just going to keep honestly making a fool of yourself. And none, I, you're probably not going to win any state even. I kind of want to see if um, Massachusetts, yeah. <laughs> Look, she's not even going to win her freaking home state, for God's sakes. Bernie has a one in two chance, 47% winning the most votes, a bit better. I'm going to say it's quite a bit better than Warren, who has a one in five. So Bernie Sanders has a, what, 26% better chance of winning the Massachusetts primary than Elizabeth Warren, and she's the senator from Massachusetts. Like, Jesus Christ. I mean, so that's why I would be surprised if she doesn't drop out before Massachusetts, because honestly, I mean, that's... A little bit embarrassing if you can't even muster a win in your state's home Democratic primary. I mean, for God's sakes, like, just drop out, drop out. That's my opinion. I would love to hear yours in the comment sections down below. How long is Elizabeth Warren going to stay in the race for? And honestly, who who do you think she's actually going to endorse when, when she does? Uh, when she does, uh, you know, call call it quits. When she does end her campaign, I hope it's Bernie, because it could be potentially a little bit helpful. But I'm not holding my breath at this point after all of the shady things she's done and said in the recent past with regards to Bernie and um, his movement and you know the supporters. So, share your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Peace.